we started the first session in second day of the conference, which is about uh, Banha Archive. The first uh, presentation uh, by Dr. Nuran Hani. First case, naked presentation, female patient, 48-year-old, diabetic, hypertensive, presented by severe weight loss, 35 kg per year, chronic diarrhea, vomiting, pain CT is requested for suspicious of malignancy. This is axial CT scan with IV contrast. There is no mass lesion can be seen in neck or chest or abdomen, as we see. But we can see left kidney, show multiple air loculi within the renal parenchyma, show bionephrosis thickening and enhancement in collecting system, thinning of the renal, the renal parenchyma, multiple tiny calcification could be seen within the kidney, there is connection the period charge in kidney to the left perirenal space, posterior pararenal space. This can reach to the neural exit foramina on the left side. You can see here, but there is no intraspinal extension. This extends along the left psoas muscle. There is stranding in the perinephric fat and thickening in the perirenal fascia. There is multiple reactive lymph nodes seen paraortic and related to the renal hilum. Here in the pelvis we can see mild pelvic collection and there is air fluid level could be seen in the urinary bladder. There was no history of previous gastrization. This is the coronal cuts of the, of the case. So we diagnose this case. This is diagram can explain the retroperitoneal space. This is anterior parina space, posterior parina space, perirenal space. This is finding we can see in this case air loculi, air fluid leveling. This is coronal cut. Final diagnosis of this case: left emphysematous pyelonephritis and emphysematous cystitis with left perirenal, posterior parirenal, and so on, multilocular abscess. This case was diagnosed as HIV positive infection. This may explain the finding we can see in the kidney calcification. We found that HIV can cause nephropathy, can cause acute or chronic renal disease, and can cause glomerular sclerosis or arterial nephrosclerosis. So this may explain calcification we can see in the kidney. This first case, differential diagnosis. Emphysematous pyelonephritis, there is uh, uh, only air loculi presented in the collecting system. Iatrogenic, we should exclude that the patient has done any maneuver before, uh, before the scan. Fistulous connection between the bowel and the kidney, which is not present in this case. So this case of emphysematous pyelonephritis. Second case, 55-year-old female patient presented by epigastric pain, weight loss, and persistent vomiting. It's a hypertensive patient. Density was requested. Finding in the neck, we can see multiple enlar pathologically enlarged lymph nodes at multiple level, as we see here. Some of them show area of cystic breaking down. This is the only neck finding. There was no specific chest finding. In the abdomen, there is diffuse circumferential mural thickening affecting the gastric wall. There's multiple pathologically enlarged perigastric lymph nodes and paraabortic lymph nodes, as we see here. There are two focal lesions could be seen in the liver. One at segment two, and one tiny subcapsular at segment five. So we put differential diagnosis for this case. This is the Finding we can see in a CT, hepatic focal lesion, uh, diffuse circumferential mural thickening, and cervical lymph node. We both differential diagnosed for gastric mural thickening, adenocarcinoma, lymphoma, 
Menetrier disease, Crohn's disease, amyloidosis, and post radiotherapy. This case was pathologically proven as gastric adenocarcinoma grade 3. Case number 3. Two months year old male patient presented by craniofacial anomaly, cleft rib, irritability, was on mechanical ventilation and referred by neurosurgeons to assess the degree of hydrocephalus. This is non contrast enhanced CT scan of the brain, axial cuts. We can see moderate dilatation of supra and infra tentorial ventricular system, and there is colbocephaly, very orientational body of the lateral ventricle, giving racing car sign. In surgical image, we can see high rounding little third ventricle, communication between fourth ventricle and retrocerebellar space. We can see thinning or hypoplasia in this uh, medullo uh, cervical junction. This is case of corpus callosal agenesis. There is also absence of the cingulate gyrus. Mild frontal pulsing could be seen, but we notice something in this case which is not usual for this age. There is calcification in the Fox cerebri and tentorium cerebelli. It's two months year old patient. This is not common for this age. So we did possible diagnose for this case as Gorlin Gold syndrome. This is criteria for diagnosis this sy syndrome. It's type of rare fac phacomatosis presented with multiple congenital anomalies, presented by absent corpus callosum, calcification in Fox cerebri, congenital anomalies in ribs, a craniofacial anomaly, cleft rib. We suggest the patient to do keratyping, but patient died. Case number four, 57 year old female patient present by acute abdominal pain two weeks after exploration laparotomy due to complicated appendicitis. Urgent ultrasound and the CT scan with oral and IV contrast was done to the patient. We can find irregularity in the wall of the gallbladder with multiple tiny air force high can be seen in the wall. There is pericolocystic collection extending in the perigastric region and the restraining of the surrounding fat. There is no other specific finding in this case. This is ultrasound image for this uh, case. A uh, gallbladder filled with turbulent uh, content, and there is defect that could be seen in the wall of the gallbladder at the fundus connected the, with the surrounding collection. So we diagnose this case as emphysematous cholecystitis complicated by gallbladder perforation. It's a rare form of cholecystitis where gallbladder infected by gas forming organism it has high risk of perforation. And uh, this case was uh, surgically confirmed as our diagnosis. Case number five, 60-year-old female patient with a history of chronic calcular cholecystitis, presented by acute abdominal pain, absolute constipation, vomiting, with increased serum creatinine level. So we can do contrast examination. This axial CT scan, we can see pneumopelia. Multiple air density could be seen in a paleo retract and extending to the common pile duct. We can see that the gallbladder is collapsed with multiple tiny air foci can be seen within and there is fistulous connection between the duodenum and the gallbladder. There is some sort of small bowel dilatation. And here we can see distal ileum. We can see gallbladder stone with proximal bowel dilatation and distal bowel collapse. We first, we showed, we showed the text, the scout of, uh, of the, the CT scan. There is multiple air density can be seen at the hepatic region, dilatation of the small bowel, but there is no air fluid leveling as in patient in a supine position. The cutoff can be seen in the left lumbar region as we see in the CT. This is the finding we can see in pneumopelia, good stone, 
fistulous connection between a gallbladder and a duodenum. So we diagnose this case as gallstone ileus and pneumopalia due to cholecystoduodenal fistula. Differential diagnose or causes of pneumopalia after ERCP or PTC, pilary enteric surgical anastomosis, cholecystoduodenal fistula, gallstone ileus, as in this case, infection as cholangitis, liver abscess, rupture, hydatid cyst, and incompetent sphincter of body. Last case. 49-year-old male patient presented to the ER after root traffic accident. Urgent ultrasound was done. Patient was significant amount of in free intraperitoneal collection. Urgent contrast enhanced CT of abdomen and pelvis was done. Patient was admitted after under observation and on follow-up. The deterioration of the clinical condition of the patient. Non-enhanced CT scan was done after four days for follow-up. This is the first examination you can see. <coughs> this is non-contrast, axial CT scan after IV contrast. We can see significant amount of hemoperitoneum, high density fluid could be seen in perisplenic region and then a pelvis. There is also pelvic hematoma. The fracture could be seen in a transverse process of L3 and L4, as we can see here. There is swelling and edema in the right psoas muscle surrounded by fat stranding. This may suggest presence of intramuscular hematoma. In the pelvis, we can see traumatic intramuscular hernia. There is tear in the internal oblique muscle and transverse abdominus muscle. There's intact external oblique muscle and herniation of a mesentric fat, no herniation of the bowel loops. Distal, bowel lo distal ilia bowel loop in a pelvis could be seen with high density here. It measures about 45 pounds field unit in pre-contrast examination and this is density of the blood. They may suggest the presence of bowel injury or intramural hematoma in the bowel. Here. This branch of a mesentric vessel is seen with irregularity and surrounded by stranding of the surrounding fat. In post contrast study, it shows subtle lack of enhancement, but there was no evidence of extravasation. This may suggest a mesentric injury or mesentric vascular injury also. Coronal, coronal cuts of this case, we can see at right side, so was hematoma, traumatic, traumatic hernia, and injury of the ileal power loop. This may be seat belt injury, but we don't know the incident or the accident. Four days. After this condition, we do follow up for the patient uh, by ultrasound. Uh, the liver was filled with multiple air foci. Urgent CT scan was done without contrast. We found portal vein gas. There was increase in the amount of free intraperitoneal collection. Patient began to develop uh, some sort of uh, alias or uh, bowel dilatation with multiple air fluid leveling. There is increase in the stranding of the surrounding fat. Pelvic hematoma become more prominent. Urgent surgical intervention was done for this patient and it, it was diagnosed uh, there was necrotic ileal bowel lobe. This is the finding we can see in the first day. This is the ileal bowel loop, which show high density content, the mesentric vascular injury in pre and post contrast study, the iliopsoas hematoma, fracture in a transverse process, coronal image, and the pelvic uh, hematoma. This is the portal vein gas and dilatation of the small bowel loops with training. This is the fourth day study. So we diagnosed this case as post traumatic necrotic ileal bowel loop with portal vein gas likely due to bowel hematoma or mesentric vascular injury. Thank you.
Uh, thanks, Dr. Norhan, for nice uh, cases. Uh, our next speaker is Dr. Maram Gazzar, assistant lecturer of radiology, Banhadi University.